So let's continue with thinking about this perspective on Fibonacci and Luca. Um, I'm going to kind of this is going to kind of wrap up a natural endpoint for uh, one version of thinking about this. Although I'll continue with a little more advanced viewpoint in, in some more videos. Um, there's lots of other identities you could prove using these uh, identifications. Now, there's other identities that aren't going to be easy to prove here. The things that are really more number theoretic, that are more about the fact that these really are integers. They're very simple integers. They have very nice number theoretic relationships. That's not necessarily going to come out of here. Um, and so we're, I think, not being an expert at all, I think what there's kind of a dichotomy between identities that are really secretly more analytic, more about these as real valued functions, um, and th that will come out of this uh, mechanism pretty nicely. And then other ones that are really more number theoretic that aren't. Um, also, I don't want to say this is the only or best way to prove some of the identities that I've shown. Um, there are simpler ways. Um, and uh, either induction or direct kind of manipulation with the uh, recursion relations or Binet's formula will do all, pretty much everything we've done here. Um, but it's just so cool to see the connection between sine and cosine. And at least a few of the identities just kind of jump out at you as saying, wait a minute, these, these are really suggesting there's a sine and cosine here. Um, now, I want to talk a little about this a little more geometrically. Um, when we talk about complex numbers, it's always a geometry situation. We've got the complex plane. And we've got a function here. Um, really, this is about... Um, looking at the geometry of the cosine function as a function from the complex numbers to the complex numbers. That's a very interesting and, and somewhat intricate topic. And I just want to show you a little bit of what, that, what this discussion leads to in that way. So what we're doing here is we're taking, um, we're looking at the function 2 cosine TL, okay? I'm going to take out the I to the N, the twisting, but I'm going to leave in the scaling so that we actually get uh, things with integers. So this guy should be a function of the complex plane that every time t is an integer, it's going to give us some multiple of i times a Luca number. Okay. Um, and that number of that multiple of i is going to shift from, from integer to integer. And so what's that going to do? Well, we'll see in a minute what the picture is. I have a nice computer picture of it. So, but what do we think about it geometrically? We've really got the function z goes to 2 cosine z. And we're not putting in any arbitrary complex number. We're putting in complex numbers that are a real number times l. And in really, mostly an integer times l. So what that means is we're taking the line in the complex plane spanned by 0 and L here, or spanned by the vector L, if you want to think of it as a vector. And we're just walking along that. And so this is going to be when t equals 0, t equals 1, t equals 2, t equals 3, t equals minus 1, t equals minus 2. And so we're looking at, for all these input points along this line, what are the output points over here? Okay. Um, so what, so this it's a tiny little bit of an investigation of the geometry of the complex cosine function. When I put in a tilted line, and it's a very specifically tilted line, the slope of this line is exquisitely engineered to do cool things over here in terms of the numbers we get, what do we actually get coming out? Okay. Similarly, to analyze the Fibonacci, what I've done is created g of t, that's the sine function. I went ahead and put in the scaling factor so we get things that uh, our integers out, but I purposely didn't put in the twisting um, because I want to just really relate this directly to the geometry of the sine function. Okay, so again, it's the same, um, the same line, but then what happens if we take z goes to uh, this conveniently scaled version? And the scaling doesn't affect the geometry too much, but it's going to make it more obvious that we have the right answer because it's going to hit certain integer points. Okay, so let me just go ahead and use the computer to do that, because I since I've got it. Okay, I did a little stuff. Okay, so here's a close-up version, and then I'll show you the, the bigger version. Okay, so the uh, the bold is Luca. Maybe we'll start with that. Okay, so notice it starts with 2. Good. Okay, and then it goes through I. Well, that's good, because we know that um, what we should be getting is things that have c continually increasing powers of i and times Luca numbers. So this is 2. That's 1 times i. That's 3 times i squared, so it's minus 3. That's uh, 4 
times i cubed, or minus 4i. There's 7 times i to the fourth, or 7. There's 11 times i. There's 18 times i squared. And so this is exactly putting the Luca numbers, and the twisting shows up geometrically. It's very pretty. So um, in a way, this is what the Luca numbers, from this point of view anyway, it's what the Luca numbers want to really do. They don't actually want to just progress out on a line. They want to twist and have sort of this four periodic behavior that it returns to the real axis every four steps as you go out. Okay, the Fibonacci numbers. Oh, and um, remember what interesting thing about the Luca numbers is they're even. So that this is Luca of zero. This is Luca of one. Luca of two, three, four. Well, what about Luca of minus one? Well, it's the same thing as Luca of one. Luca of minus two is the same thing as Luca of two. Luca of minus three. So what happens really is it comes in from minus infinity, coming in this. Whoa! I didn't want to do that. I'll try not to click. Comes in from minus infinity, do, 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 and then bounces off two, and then goes back out to plus infinity. It's a fairly common thing for a parametrized curve to do if it's even as a function of the parameter. It just it does the curve twice, but bounces right at the end. So there's kind of a singularity there. Okay, what about Fibonacci? Uh, Fibonacci, well, let's start with zero. F of zero is zero. F of one is one. F of 2 is 1, but I'm going ahead and letting the twisting happen, so we actually get i. Then we get 2 times i squared, 3 times i cubed, 5 times i to the 4th, 8 times i to the 5th, 11, oh, sorry, 13 times i to the 6th, etc. And Fibonacci is odd, so here we actually do get um, something different, but it's just the, 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 the spiral we just had. Uh, reflected or rotated 180 degrees, put shoved, shoved through the origin. So we get 0, minus 1, minus i, 2, 3i, minus 5, minus 8i, 13. So really the whole story is encoded in the forward spiral, but the whole thing is this uh, combination of the two spirals. Now, notice these are not the usual spiral shapes associated with the Fibonacci number. This is not just a golden ratio spiral um, as we go out. It's related to it, and I, I didn't really work up exactly the relationship, but notice that like in here, this is not a spiral right here, and this is this funky thing that just kind of stops at zero. It doesn't spiral infinitely in... Um, and so it has this spiral shape, but it's not the spiral you usually see in a lecture on Fibonacci. If you want to look at the uh, larger scale behavior, um, let's see, like Luca is up to, oh, let, let me cheat and go down to the table. Oh, I don't know if I can get the table in at the same time. Um, let, me, let me make it a little smaller for a second here. Okay. Um, so Luca, for example, 2, 1, 3, 4, 6, 11, 29. Are we seeing the 29? Um, 29, yeah, 29 here, 47, 76, 123, and Fibonacci, we got 13, 21, 34, uh, 55, 89, okay, and so this really compares correctly with, uh, so the Fibonacci is just this sequence with integers, and what we're plotting is the, the, just the twisted version, not scale, but twisted. And similarly, the twisted version of the Luca. And that makes these cool spirals, but not perfect, perfect spiral shapes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to stop this video here, and I'm going to take a different tack in the rest of the videos, um, making it more general, talking about the general version of Luca sequences where the recursion relations are um, much more arbitrary, and then connecting it to matrices and taking exponentials of matrices um, and differential equations.